Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Ang Li. It's my great pleasure to be here to present our paper. Uh, the title you can see here is, is Free Auth Physical Layer Message Authentication for ZigBee Networks. So uh, first, let, let me uh, briefly introduce the ZigBee. So what is ZigBee? So ZigBee is a IEEE 802.15.4 based wireless communication protocol, pr protocols designed for low power, loaded rate wireless networks. So it can operate on three frequency bands. As you can see here, it includes 2.4 GHz, 900 MHz, and 869 68 MHz. And also we can see from the bottom figure, the ZigBee network can support uh, three network topologies like Star, Tree, and Mesh. So ZigBee has been widely used in many application scenarios, such as home automation and industrial automation. So this is, uh, uh, the, uh, this is the uh, architecture of the of ZigBee. So as we can see here, the ZigBee architecture includes four layers from bottom to top. It includes the physical layer, Mac layer, network layer, and application layer. So as one of the most popular wireless communication protocols, so security is one of the major concerns in the ZigBee standard. So ZigBee defines or includes security mechanism both in the network layer and the application layer. Let's first take an example to show uh, how the existing ZigBee security mechanism works. So suppose that uh, device A wants to send a message to device B. So at the receiver side of device B, device B will authenticate the receive message at the application layers based on a, a application layer key called link case. So this link case is only shared by the transmitter and the receiver, say the device A and device B. And also during the transmission, the package, or say the message, will go through the series of rotors. So before each rotor forward the received package to its next hub, uh, they will also authenticate the received package uh, at the network layer based on a network layer case. And we found that uh, this network layer case is shared by all the ZigBee nodes in the, in the ZigBee networks. So you can imagine that this network key is a group key or say common key. And this common network keys can be or could be com compromised by the attackers. In other words, attackers may obtain this common network key and then it can generate a large volume of fake package and inject the fake package into the target network. So they can have some unexpected consequences, such as it can cause like network congestions, or it can uh, it can run out the batteries of a Zigbee Zigbee node because the Zigbee node will, should perform the deauthentication authentication again and again, and finally it will run out those uh, battery of the Zigbee nodes. Especially consider Zigbee most many Zigbee nodes devices are the uh, low power uh, devices. So to solve this issue, we propose our solution. Uh, called FIAUS. So FIAUS is a physical layer hub by how message, message authentication frameworks. So our motivation is that we want to make minimal modification to the existing ZigBee protocols. And we also notice that the implementation of the physical layer is determined by uh, each, uh, each vendors. So we believe that there must be some room in the physical layer that we can explore to embed our new security mechanism in the existing ZigBee protocols. Our key idea is that we try to embed a one-time password, uh, one password based on device-specific key into the physical layer frame. So this is our key idea. So this is, let's, see, let's first see how to generate the physical layer one-time password, uh, the POTP uh, in short. This is about the POTP generation. So as we can see here, uh, we use this uh, formula to generate uh, uh, POTP. Uh, to be more specific, the, uh, we use a standard ZigBee secure, secure key, such as the link key, along with the like, time style and the sequence numbers and the, uh, and the MAC address of the transmitters to generate uh, a POTP by using a, a existing uh, HMAC-based and time-based one-time password generation algorithm. So this is how we generate the POTP. So the challenge here is the how to uh, embed the uh, POTP into the physical layer frame. So, so, so in our solutions to reduce the impact on the normal transmissions, we only embed the POTP into the uh, preamble sequences of each physical layer frames. 
And then we propose a three scheme to embed the POTP into the physical layer frame. The first frame, uh, the first scheme is a word chip. So here are the key observations. So as you can see here, this is uh, the, trans the ZigBee transmitter. So after the receiving, for the ZigBee transmitter, after the receiving the bit stream from the up layer, they, uh, they will use, uh, the ZigBee transmitter will use the uh, DSS to convert uh, each four bit ZigBee simple to a 32 bit PN code based on the predefined uh, table of symbol, uh, uh, symbol to chip, as you can see in the red table. So at the receiver side, uh, so there's, uh, uh, in, in, at the receiver side, uh, some chips, uh, you know, in practice, some chips may be corrupted during the transmission due to the interference and uh, uh, multiply. So the received 32 uh, bits uh, PN code will not match one of these uh, 16 uh, valid sequences in the table. So the, uh, so the receiver would find out the corresponding Zigbee, uh, four bit Zigbee symbols, uh, such as the, ha the Hamming distance between the uh, received and the real PN code uh, are minimized. And at the same time, uh, the minimal Hamming distance uh, should, be, uh, should not be greater than a predefined threshold. So this is how the Zigbee device transmit and receive the signal in the physical layer. And uh, this uh, predefined threshold can control the maximal Hamming distance between the received and the predefined 32, uh, 32 bit PN code allowing a tolerance margin for noise and interference uh, resilience. So based on this observation, uh, our first game, WordChip, can use this tolerance margins to embed the POTP. In particular, they, they just replace these chips with uh, lower error, error probabilities with the POTP base. So this is key idea of our uh, first scheme. So we also propose a, a second scheme called VRAMP. So this is the key observation of the, our second scheme is, uh, is that, uh, so remember that Zigbee devices use the OQPSK, as we can see here, OQPSK moderator to moderate the, moderate the chip sequences. So OQPSK encodes the two bits pre symbol by using four phases. So corresponding to the four points that we can see here uh, in, the, in the figure around the circle, the four point around the circle. So this means that, so uh, from this figure, we can also can see that the amplitude of the OQPSK symbols do not carry any information bits. So, uh, so this, uh, this means that we can embite uh, POTP bits by manipulating the amplitude of the OQPSK symbols. So as you can see here, if the POTP bits is one, if the POTP is zero, uh, we, uh, we, we, uh, we can embed it by decreasing the amplitude of the uh, an, uh, of an uh, OQPSA symbol, such as the blue point in the, uh, in the, in the figure. And also if the POTP base is one, we can embed it, it by uh, increasing the amplitude of uh, uh, OQPSK symbols, so we can, as we can see in the uh, red dot uh, in, the, in the figure. So simply put, the key idea of our second scheme were AMP. So we try to embed the POTP bits by manipulating the amplitude of OQPSK symbols. So this is about our second uh, scheme. Our third scheme is that it's called war phase. Uh, so at the receiver side, so Zigbee devices uses, uh, use, uh, use, uh, use uh, OQPSK demoderator to convert the received RQ samples to uh, the chip sequences. In particular, it uses the phase shift between two adjacent RQ samples to demoderate the Zigbee symbols. As you can see here, if the phase shift between two adjacent RQ samples is less than zero, it will output chip zero. And uh, another way, it will output chip, chip one. So this means that uh, we can embed a, a POTP into the physical layer package by manipulating the phase shift between two adjacent RQ data samples. So as we, can, uh, as we can see here, so if the POTP bit is zero, the original, uh, the original phase shift is skewed by, uh, by, uh, by a parameter called mu. And if the POTP bit is one, the original phase shift is skewed by the parameter called lambda. So this is key idea of the, our uh, third scheme we're phase. And also we, we analyze the uh, communi communication and the uh, computation overhead. So since, as we mentioned it before, uh, to generate a POTP, uh, we only use some uh, standard, ZigBee standard secure key, such as the link, uh, link key. So we do not involve any extra communication. So the communication over overhead is negligible. 
And also for the computational overhead, since we only use uh, uh, like the HMAC based and time based one time password uh, generation method, so the computational overhead is, is very low. And also to evaluate uh, the energy consumption, we use the benchmark result in TI report. And for, uh, for each ZigBee nodes, for the 128 bit case, we, for hardware implication, we can see that the energy consumption of our scheme is about one time, one time, one time point one, uh, that, uh, that of the uh, energy consumption of the original uh, message authentication scheme. And also for the software implication, our energy consumption is about the 0 0.8 uh, that of the energy consumption of the original uh, message authentication scheme. Uh, we also do some uh, security analysis. As you can see here, we assume that attacker can uh, try to inject a large volume of fake package into the pack, into the attack network, uh, ZigBee network, and also we consider three types of attackers. So the first one is that we assume attackers try to use some fake POTP to inject the fake package. And uh, we can imagine the probability that they can successfully inject uh, authenticated POTP is depend on the length of the uh, length of the key. And also for the second type of attackers, we consider the replay attack. And uh, since uh, as we mentioned before, so each POTP generation satisfies the one-time property, so uh, we can defeat against the replay attack. And for the th third type of attack, we consider attackers may obtain a device specific key, but since uh, uh, so the key is a device specific, so we so they cannot they can just they can easily detect by the transmitters. So here is the benefits of our, our scheme. So as we can see here, we do not make uh, we do not need to make the hardware modification, and also uh, we uh, we are the standard complaint complaint, and also we only involve some software updates, and also the our the impact of the our scheme on the normal. Data transmission is very uh, is a very limited, and so the cost of our scheme is very low. I also conduct some experiment. This is uh, uh, some USLP used in uh, devices used in our experiment. So our, this is about our experiment setup. We conduct the experiment in, the, in our lab, in the hallway, or in the basement, and also we use some matrix like the PBER, PER, FN, and FPR to evaluate our uh, scheme. So this is the PBER performance for our uh, the three schemes. As we can see here, all we have some similar observations. So as the uh, as the NR uh, increase, the PBER will decrease. And also for FNR, we have similar observation. As we can see here, as the as the NR increase, the F, F, uh, the as the NR decrease, the FNR will uh, increase uh, decrease. Right? So for the PPP, and this is about the PER performance, and also we evaluate the performance under attack. If uh, attackers have no uh, POTP and uh, fake POTP uh, and uh, replay POTP, we can see that our scheme can uh, detect the fake package. To, so to conclude, to, 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 uh, to conclude our, we propose a physical layer uh, hub, hub message authentication framework for ZigBee network called the FreeAuth. And uh, we can, so our scheme, uh, our, uh, our solution do not need to make any hardware modification and are compatible with the uh, existing ZigBee standards. And also we, uh, we only involve some software updates and, uh, and uh, the impact on the normal transmission is very limited and the cost is, very, is also very limited. So this is about my paper. Thank you. Thank you.